prepare him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature sing joy to the earth the savior reigns let men their song employ while fields and floods repeat the sounding joy repeat the sounding joy repeat repeat the sounding joy no more let sin and sorrows grow nor thorns infest the ground he comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found far as the curse is found far as, far as the curse is found he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness, wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders one of his love. Amen. You may be seated. Merry Christmas. The scripture readings are prophecies uh, from Isaiah and from Micah. First from Isaiah, for a child will be born to us a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. And from Micah, there will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness. From then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. I've lost my way. I'm lost. Five one? Ah. Oh, well I was wrong then. Five? Oh, okay. How do you like that? Now muster yourselves in troops, daughter of troops. They have laid siege against us. With a rod they will smite the judge of Israel on the cheek. But as for you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you one will go forth for me to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Therefore he will give them up until the time when she who is in labor has borne a child. Then the remainder of his brethren will return to the sons of Israel. And he will arise and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will remain because at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. This one will be our peace when the Assyrian invades our land, when he tramples on our citadels, then we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight leaders of men. Praise God. Our next hymn is one by Charles Wesley, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. I remember reading once about Wesley that he was kicked out of all the churches because his sermons were so fiery and evangelistic and they didn't want him. So he'd go out into the open fields 
and preached to hundreds and thousands of people, probably more than would have been inside the churches. And so God has a way of working all these things out. Come thou long and expected Jesus, please rise as we sing this. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us let us find our rest in thee Israel's strength and consolation hope of all the earth thou art dear desire of every nation joy of every longing heart born thy people to deliver born a child and yet a king born to reign in us forever now thy gracious king by thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. By thine all sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. Thank you. Please be seated. Now we'll be reading from hmm, Matthew chapter 1, verses 17 through 25. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation to Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. <clears throat> now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. Okay, so we will now go to singing uh, Away in a Manger, if we could all rise, please. Away in a manger, a crib for a bed, a little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are No crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus. Look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. 
Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care. <clears throat> Fit us for heaven to live with thee there. Good evening. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm still around, dear friends. Uh, uh, so our passage is from uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 15. And it reads, uh, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what has been written by the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called them the Magi and determined from them the exact time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search carefully for the child. And when you have found him, report to me, so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went their way. And the star, which they had seen in the east, went on before them until it came and stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. Now when they had gone, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. So Joseph got up and took the child and his mother while it was still night and left for Egypt. He remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. Let us pray. <clears throat> we thank you, dear Father, that out of Egypt you called out your son, your son who uh, was born into this world, into this world that didn't recognize him. He who is the light of the world was rejected by man who dwelt in darkness. Uh, and yet, Lord, uh, he still is the king. He was the king. Lord, it's amazing that you revealed this truth to the Magi who came from a far off land. Perhaps having learned this from men like, like Daniel years before. And yet, Lord, uh, 
Herod and Jerusalem with him were alarmed. They were shaken when they heard, when they saw this great entourage that came to meet the king, to present themselves before the king, to worship the king, the God of all creation. Our Father, we are truly humbled when we think that all this was done for wretched sinners like us. We don't deserve the Christmas story. We don't deserve Christ the Messiah, the Savior. We don't deserve this little child. And yet, dear Lord, we know that he grew strong and uh, in favor of, of both God and man, and he, he was your, the son you sent. He's the one who carried our sorrows on the cross. He's the one who suffered sin's penalty on our behalf. And he's the one who died and rose again and ascended on high and reigns at the right-hand side of the Father. Lord, we pray that as we think of this Christ, this Messiah, this child born this day, that, Lord, you'd warm our hearts towards you, that we would love you more. Lord, be gracious to us and do not hold our sins against us, but minister to each one of us and be glorified. And may we join the angels in singing the glories, the beauty of this child born this day. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we shall rise and sing um, the next hymn. Hark, the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. <clears throat> Amen. All right, without looking, who wrote the text to that song? Anybody know? Hark the Herald? Wesley. And who wrote the music? Wesley was uh, Anglican ish. Of course, he started the Methodist movement with his brother. Close. Mendelssohn. 
quite a, quite a well-known composer. He was Jewish, uh, became a believer, and uh, wrote the, the music to that. He actually wrote it for the, uh, the, the remembrance of Gutenberg and the printing press that the Lord used so much to bring light into the world and uh, did not think of it as a secular musical piece, but uh, later on in the 1800s, someone married the two, uh, an Anglican and a Jewish Christian, and quite a, a, quite a result here as we still sing. That's one of my favorite, one of my favorite carols. Well, we're going to look at Matthew 1 here for a moment, then we'll, we'll close with Silent Night, and we'll turn off all the lights if we can, if you guys are okay and we'll, with that, and we'll sing Silent Night uh, uh, together. But we're going to look at Matthew 2, the text we just read. Um, the text is on, on page 6, and, uh, and I'll have it on the, on the screen in front of you. Uh, or your Bible, if you open your Bible to Matthew chapter 2. We're going to look at this light of the world and the response, the response to that light, and just ask you, what is your response to the light of the world that is Jesus? What is your response to the light of the world that is Jesus? Matthew chapter 2, there are two responses. Uh, the first one is Herod. The second one is the Magi, the wise men. Uh, and we do find here that true wise people still worship Jesus. Uh, it's, and so I trust that you will respond to the light in the same way. We all respond to light in different ways. We respond to the absence of light in different ways. Today you may respond to the absence of light by falling asleep. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it's been maybe a long day. It's warm in here. Praise God for that. Uh, so that helps us uh, tail off to sleep. Um, I love light. I love Christmas lights. I do love candle lights. I just love that part of Christmas. Uh, decorating the Christmas tree. Uh, there's the, the Christmas lights on the houses, right? We did that a little bit. We enjoy doing that. I love doing that. Actually, I would do that as a family growing up. I would decorate our Christmas house kind of like... Uh, we, we, did, we didn't quite go all out this year. We just did, this isn't us. This isn't us. We actually didn't do a whole lot. Uh, but but maybe, you, maybe you did that. I saw the, the Guinness Book of World Records, Half a Million Lights uh, by David and Janine. Um, that, that is, that's quite a few lights on your house. I wonder what their neighbors thought of that. Uh, this here, the, I don't know where that is, but, but they, they do that up in, uh, where is it here? I know in, in, in Brooklyn Heights, they do a good job. Yeah. Anyway, Diker Heights. This one was the winner. Uh, we're definitely not winning uh, at our house this year. Um, but it, it symbolizes a great truth that Jesus is the light that comes into the world. And some respond the right way, some reject. So let's look at the text here for a moment and just let it speak to us about uh, both the right way and wrong way of responding to Jesus' light. Jesus is the light of the world. Joy, he has come. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Will you receive the light or reject the light? Are you drawn to the light of Jesus? Why would you be drawn to his light? Look at the first, the first response in Matthew 2, the response of unbelief. We would say unbelieving fear. There's a disrupting arrival in verses 1 to 3 of Matthew 2, telling the story here. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, We've seen this light. And we've come, we've responded to hear more about the light. Where is he who is born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was joyful. The Lord has come. No, he was troubled 
and all Jerusalem with him. After Jesus was born, he says, now this was actually quite a bit after. This was probably almost a year. Within the first year, close to a year, they've moved from the barn. No doubt Joseph has started to do a little bit of work as a carpenter, and they've moved to maybe a little cottage there in Bethlehem and setting up house as much as they can. And that's our hero, Jesus, now a little baby from Matthew 1. He's named Jesus Jehovah saves. We don't know a whole lot of what happens in that first year, but as he's getting to be his birthday, there's a birthday party. At his birth, shepherds come. At his birthday, something even more amazing happens. Jesus is the hero, but we need a villain. And on to the stage left, we'll say, you're right, comes our villain. His name is Herod. Herod was a wicked king ruled over Israel at this time, kind of a puppet of Rome. He was jealous, fickle, turned on the closest of his companions. It was said it would be better to be a pig than Herod's son in a Jewish family. He converted to Judaism just to rule over Jewish people, but they knew he wasn't a true believer. So he was hated by his companions constituents, immoral, irreligious, idolatrous. This is Herod, ruthless, keeping a grasp like a Grinch on Israel. He was king and ruled with an iron hand, would kill his son, would kill anyone who was thought to usurp the throne. Enter the wise men, magi, coming into Herod's palace, Seems though perhaps the star led them this far, and I don't have time to go into all that, but now they've lost track, and so they come to Herod and say, where is he who's born king of the Jews? How is that going to go in Herod's house? New king? I didn't hear anything about this. Kind of like, CEO in Manhattan, 72nd floor, and somebody from the third floor comes up with greetings and said, oh, we heard that there's a new CEO. We've come to congratulate him. Uh, Who is a new CEO? I didn't get that memo. Who do I have to fire before they take my job? Similar response. This is a problem. And so the wise men, very powerful themselves, come and clash with this puppet ruler. These wise men would be kind of like Daniel. You remember Daniel in the Old Testament was a wise, revered, at one point ruling all the world because of his wisdom and following God's prophecies. Well, that was hundreds of years before Jesus, but no doubt he left holy scriptures there and others in the East who would follow. And so they followed scriptures like Numbers 24, 17 that say, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come forth from Jacob, a scepter, a ruling scepter. And so things like that caused them to follow. 900 miles they've traveled, months, not just with three of them, with a whole cohort, almost a a little bit of an army coming into Jerusalem. And so all of Jerusalem sees this and everybody's trembling. Because they know that Herod does not appreciate this. And so Herod says, well, let me get some counsel, discerning counsel. He gathers all the religious people, chief priests, scribes, and he says, where, where is the Messiah to be born? Where is this king of the Jews to be born? Oh, well, finally, he's asking us a religious question. Maybe this is good news. No, it's bad news. But they do know their scriptures. I've been reading Micah 5. I've been studying Micah this last couple weeks. It's so cool. I wish we had time to go into that. But um, Micah 5, Micah is an amazing prophecy. It is Romans, the gospel of Romans. It's all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God himself has come down and provided us a perfect lamb to wash away our sins. And there Micah 5 says he's going to be born in Bethlehem, 
amazing prophecy. And so they knew of this prophecy, and they said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what has been written in the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, no means least among the leaders of Judah, from you will come one who is the rule, ruler of Israel. Anybody know what it goes on to say? Whose going forth has come from eternity. This one to be born in Bethlehem actually will be eternal. Amazing prophecy. And so they tell him this, they tell Herod this, and we have this deceitful command. Herod says, hey, come over here. You just, you just tell me when you find this king so that I can worship him as well. Wink, wink. Um, Herod is not going to worship Jesus. For him, it is not joy to the world, the Lord has come. It's where is the Lord that I can kill him? And he's going to do just that. He's going to, to kill every boy in that region who was born about this time, trying to kill this usurper. He doesn't want to bow. And so he's going to stay in sadness and selfishness until he dies. That is unwise. The second response is very beautiful. We'll say the response of knee-bending worship, the response of worship. Instead of fear, we have faith. After hearing the king, they went their way, and the star which they saw in the east goes before them until it stays over where the child was in Bethlehem. So they make the trip from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. There is exuberant worship response of worship to the light of Jesus, how will you respond? They rejoice. This child is born. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let everyone receive their king. Herod wants to kill the king. These wise men want to rejoice before him. Literally, look at verse 10. <laughs> they, they want to re, they rejoice with exceedingly great joy. I mean, this is, this is joy above joy above joy. They're overjoyed with joy. They've been traveling probably since he was born. Months and months and months. And finally, they've come. This is the place we found him. The king of kings. And so this group that in their culture would actually be the one that said, this is the next king of the world. They come before Mary and Joseph and this little baby. And we find genuine worship. After coming to the house, and this is why we know this is later, after coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Wow. They're showing obedience, bowing before the king, allegiance before the king of kings. A baby in his mother's arms, worshipped by some of the most powerful individuals of the earth at that time. Why? Why? Because they were wise enough to know the scriptures revealed from God. It's the same for you. Genuine worship, exuberant worship, and costly worship. They bring these gifts, opening their treasures. They presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, we have an offering basket in the back. For all of you who have brought gold... You can keep your frankincense and myrrh to yourself. No. <laughs> what is that? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Frankincense sounds just odd. Uh, there's message there. Gold is the king's, belonged in the palace. Frankincense belonged in the temple. It had to do with sacrifice. Of course, we know myrrh 
belonged in the tomb and to deal with burial. We find even in the gifts the story of Jesus' life. Leaving the palace to make the priestly role of sacrificing himself and rising again for our sins. I think it was beyond that. <laughs> I, I do believe that God is taking care of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. This would have been easily traded at that time, and he's preparing to take Jesus to Egypt. They need money. They're a penniless young couple. I love how God takes care of his children. Isn't that neat? And so he knows they will need this for their trip to Egypt, and this is something they could trade easily. They don't need Judean currency. Uh, Mary's probably thinking, where's diapers for next week? What am I going to do with this? But they've got to be ready for a trip. And so this will trade well in Egypt, and they'll be able to take care of themselves for the years there until they come back, move to Nazareth. But these bring to Jesus what they uh, are gifts for a king, signifying that he's king. And, and they, they're, they're bowing down, submitting their allegiance to, to Jesus as Lord in worship, acknowledging him as, as Micah says, Yahweh. This is Jehovah God come in human flesh to take upon himself the sins of the world. And so they give the gifts of a king to a king. I don't have that. I don't know how you feel today. Maybe you're like, what could I give? He doesn't ask us to give huge amounts. He asks us to give ourselves. Right, what do you have? What do you have? What it is you give. And that's what he asks Herod, that's what he asks the Magi, that's what he asks Tim. And so we devote ourselves to Jesus today. Lord Jesus, you are my Lord, you are my Savior, I give to you my all. My gifts, my talents, whether that be singing, whether that be serving, whether that be accounting, or changing diapers, or changing tires, it's all the Lord's. And that's where that song comes from. All right, the little drummer boy pictured coming in Matthew 2 here. Here, the kings give these great gifts. What do I have to give a king? Uh, give to him your heart. And he plays his little drum, right? God approves of your gift. And that is the message here. We bow. We bow. And so what Matthew is doing, right? Matthew is proving to Jewish, the Jewish audience, that's why Luke gives us a lot more background as far as the birth scene. He's appealing to a Gentile audience, but actually all of Matthew 1 and 2 are built around prophecies that are portraying Jesus as the Messianic king in his birth, where he's born and his reception. And so he's encouraging Jewish people to believe in Yeshua as their Messiah. But he's also juxtaposing these two receptions, and this is our message for ourselves. Are you going to respond to the light as Herod? And reject, or as the wise men? Are you going to be wicked or wise? Are you going to bow? Or are you going to reject? Magi are wise, Herod wicked. Magi come in fear. I'm sorry, joy, Herod in fear. I messed that up. Those last three. I copy-pasted the wrong. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so Herod, fear. Killing, rule over the Magi in joy and worship and obedience. We need to respond as they did in obedience and worship and have joy. Jesus came as heaven's spotless lamb, beautiful gift. But as we receive the gift, we bow to him as king. We give to him our, our obedience, our allegiance. This is the repentance of which faith is the same coin. We believe in Jesus as Savior, but we bow to him as Lord. And as you bow to him as your king, you find a destination, a purpose, forgiveness, an eternal family. All these things, lasting joy. And you can sing, joy to the world, the Lord is come. All that is joyful is not based on outward circumstances. 
And that is not what brings us joy, the things under the tree. You can be a person bowing in a little cottage of a young couple hundreds of miles from home, months from your homeland, and find joy of rejoicing and exceeding great joy because you can find Jesus. Jesus is where we find our joy. It's not in circumstances. It's not in weather. It's not in relationships. It's not in financial security. Mary and Joseph, it's in finding Jesus. And so we can say, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let, and put your name in there, Tim received his king. And then you have joy, because you have the greatest gift of Christ. Isaac Watts uh, knew that well. Um, he did not have a whole lot in outer circumstances growing up. Actually, as a boy, his dad was often in prison. Uh, his dad's name was Isaac Watts as well, and he was a preacher of the gospel. And uh, at that point, uh, he was doing that in England in an Anglican time where to do that, uh, preach in your own pulpit, meant go to jail. And so he would go to jail. You can imagine little Isaac growing up in Christmas time, his dad is not there because he's in jail for preaching the gospel. Difficult to go through. Also because of that, even though he's an extremely gifted and talented young man, he was refused the best schools of the day like Cambridge, where he would easily have gone. But he continued to find joy in the Lord. He followed his dad's footsteps in preaching the gospel. Loved singing, making new songs. Um, they were always only singing the psalms in archaic words in churches of his day. And so he's like, Dad, why can't we sing newer songs with newer lyrics that we understand? And his dad's like, well, do it, son. And so he did. He wrote 600 hymns and hundreds of other poems, many of them that we still sing to this day, because he found joy in the Lord. As he wrote, many received his songs, and he became one of the most popular pastors in London and in England. One young lady enjoyed his writing so much that she kind of fell in love with his writing, wrote him some letters he wrote back. She writes him, tells him that she's his number one fan, writes him again, proposes marriage. He writes back and responds in the affirmative. They meet face to face, and she changes her mind. <laughs> she says he was only five feet tall with shallow face and hooked nose, prominent cheekbones, small eyes, and a death-like color. So she went her way. And so did he, applying himself to the love of the Lord. No longer did he go back toward human romance, but found joy in receiving Christ as king and would pen those words, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. I've received my king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, no more let sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, re reversing the curse. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. You too today can have the joy of the Lord if you follow this wise way. Heads bowed and eyes closed, let me encourage you to respond in faith and repentance. You've heard this story, maybe you even believe somewhat that it's true, this story of Jesus. I want you to now believe on it with all your heart and soul, trusting in Jesus as Savior and Lord.
This is the message that the prophets heard very little in the scriptures, but they knew the scriptures were the words from God and they grasped them. The scriptures I've read before you are the words from God. Grasp them now is true. That Jesus has come to save you from your sin and give you joy. It doesn't come from Herod's palace, his immoral lifestyle, his endless wealth. It comes from leaving all, traveling nine months, and bowing beside the baby, king of the universe. And acknowledging him as your king. Would you now in your heart, if you've never done it before, bow to Jesus. He's listening. He's eternal God. He hears you. And say, Jesus, I believe you as my Lord. I believe you as my Savior. Give me eternal life. Forgive me of all my sins. Give me strength to follow you from this day forth. If you trust that he will save you, he will, even now. Lord, we praise you for your loving kindness. We praise you for the gift of eternal life. We praise you for leaving all and coming, that we may have life for eternity. We ask that by your grace, this light that has come into the world would draw us and draw us so we fear no darkness for eternity. May you all respond in faith to your glorious message. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, if you would, with, with me, sing our closing hymn. A silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. We'll stand. If we could have the front lights out, Sarah, do you think you could... Do that without light. We'll turn off all the lights here. You have a candle there. And we'll sing this together in closing. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. so tender and mild sleep in heavenly peace sleep in heavenly peace silent night holy night shepherds quake at the side glory stream from heaven on high heavenly host sing alleluia Christ the Savior is born Christ the Savior is born. Amen. Before we sing the last, guys, it's okay with the lights. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Thank you. Let's sing the last verse Silent Night, Holy Night. Son of God loves pure light. Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord of thy birth. Jesus, Lord of thy birth. Sing it on the last. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face. With the dawn of Lord, at thy birth, Jesus.
Jesus, Lord, and thy birth. Amen. You may be seated. Let's do a couple announcements here. There's a, a giving box in the back if you'd like to give your gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Or you could give online if you'd like to give. This are this week and la- this Sunday is our last uh, giving time for the opportunity for the, the year. I um, want to especially welcome those of you who are here for the first time. Uh, we have a gift on the back table uh, for you. Please take one of them. And uh, if you have a place of worship, we understand. But if not, we would love to have you here every Sunday at 1 p.m. Tomorrow we'll finish Luke 2. Uh, and uh, we did Matthew tonight, we'll do Luke 2 and finish the reading of the Nativity. And then also, we're, we're doing this this year, uh, we're having a Christmas dinner. Uh, you may have family and friends to be with, uh, and that's fine, but if you haven't made plans and you'd like to join us for a Christmas dinner, we'll have, some, uh, we'll have a meal uh, following the service at 1 p.m. and welcome all of you. Yes, uh, 1 p.m. is the service, service will be about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, And then we'll have a meal and uh, sing a little bit more, some more Christmas carols together. Really appreciate all of you being with us. Uh, Thank you for uh, for making this this evening, this cold evening, uh, time to celebrate together. Please get to know one another uh, as you leave. And uh, especially if you're here for the first time, get a gift from us here. Let's stand and we'll thank the Lord for our time. Ask his blessing on us as we're dismissed here. Lord, we do uh, praise you again for your many blessings. Thank you for letting us uh, worship you together. Uh, We ask for your blessing as we leave. Uh, Would you good hand be on us, Lord? Uh, Keep uh, keep us safe. We do pray for those who have uh, little heat or no heat, especially those who have no home, that you would be with them. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for uh, even spending many homeless nights uh, here on earth, your first night. Uh, was homeless uh, there, and and we just remember you uh, leaving home and uh, coming so far, uh, and then we think of these kings uh, coming so far to acknowledge you as king, and here we've come, and we acknowledge you as king. Uh, We just ask that you would be with us until we meet again. May your good hand be upon us, Uh, lead, guide, and direct us. Uh, We give to you our lives, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. We're dismissed.